Hey guys, good morning. Troy Dooley here with our morning coffee reflections. You know, I'm still reading uh, Warren, uh, Warren Woodward and Chris Brady's book, Leadership and Liberty. And it came in, you know, handy as I was reading through today, getting ready for this. I, I started thinking this is the 10th day of the new year. Usually by this time, a lot of folks have already, they're bypassed the New Year's resolution, the hangover's over. You know, they start doing their taxes and realize they can't afford the gym membership, so they've already quit doing that. And they just slowly but slowly but slowly move away from where they're going. And what I've caught myself doing this year is just the opposite. Uh, I'm looking for more and more things that will, will feed that hunger that I have. And, you know, I've, I've been blessed over the years to meet guys like, like Orrin and Chris. And John Maxwell gave me one of my journals a few years ago, and I've been writing in it. And... And then I keep my daily action plan, you know, in my eight and a half by 11. And, and these have been out with me everywhere I go. And then Steve Luxenberg, one of my great friends and a top leader over at Zervita, had turned me on to Awaken 2010, which is a 21-day fast during the month of January. And, and for those of you that are Christians, you know, you know what a fast and prayer time can do. And, and you know, usually we do that at Lent. And, and this is right at the first of the year. And I got excited. And... So I was sitting here, I was praying, I've, I've got a big meeting today that I've got to participate in, and I open it up, and, and this is what Chris and Orange book says, it says, hunger, the fuel of your leadership engine, and I thought, wow, man, that's, that's it, that's the word that could describe what I'm going through right now. It's a hunger to be closer to my Lord, a hunger to serve people better, uh, a hunger to be a better husband, a, a, a father, a, a best friend to my kids, a a hunger to be the leader that I feel that I was called to be. And, and, and I know that I must be on the right track because as Sue Sword said last week to me, man, there's just some bombardment coming in from every direction. And I'm thinking, man, I, you know, I've, I've written worse stuff on my blog about people than the last two weeks. As a matter of fact, we haven't written much of anything. And, and, and I thought, okay, this is cool. Because as I read through this, I thought, this, this is where, I, where I'm at. And they wrote, when the pain of staying the same becomes greater than the pain of change, you'll change. And I thought, man, they hit it on the head. I don't want to be the same person that I was in, in last year or the first decade of this year. I want to use that as my guide. I think we all should. But I want to be, I want to be moving forward. And they give us some questions in here. And I, There's no reason to write my own. I thought, man, this is great. I'll just write these in my journal. And it says, having the proper question to ask yourself helps. Here's a few. Number one, who am I going to serve today? You know, that's something that I've woke up to for years now because I realized many years ago, having John Maxwell as a mentor, that it's all about serving others. When I read my Bible and I really started getting into what was right for me, I started seeing how Jesus always served other people. You know, that, that's something that I've always wanted to be like. I want to be like him. Now, good Lord knows I'm not close to that. But that's what I strive to. The second one was, what steps am I going to take towards my dream today? Well, I've got a daily action plan that keeps me focused on that. I use three by five cards. I, I use my journal. I use my notebook. You know, I've constantly got stuff popping up on my computer. I try to stay connected. I sync my cell phones, whatever the case may be. You need to do the same. You know, if you've got an iPhone, they've got all kinds of iPhone apps now that would help you in this. Number three, what is my purpose in life? You know, I've got a, I've got a card. I've written it in my journal. It's everywhere. I know what my purpose, my personal purpose is for my family, for my wife, for my business, for myself personally, for those that I minister to across the nation. All of that together. Number four, what special skills has God given me that point me to my purpose? Now, this is big. And if y'all haven't read The Purpose Driven Life, I, I, I really challenge you to go read it. Whether you, whether you believe the theology behind it or not, read it in context and I tell you what it will change your life number uh, number five what activities make me come alive you know the one thing that I that I well more than one thing but the, the main part of my day that gets me just invigorated just gets me excited is when I do this little snippet when I do our radio shows and when I know that I'm able to serve somebody else because they they give me that feedback and they say man thank you I needed that or I needed that you know that's the key behind what we do and why we do it and, and it's so fun. It's not about the money. 
you know, the money would be great. We, we definitely all need money to pay our bills. We, you know, I, I believe that, that financial freedom is a whole lot better than poverty. There's no doubt. But I also believe that if you do the right thing for the right reason to the most people, money will follow. There's, it, it always has. You know, with six kids and now raising two granddaughters, I had somebody the other day say, Troy, why do you sacrifice so much? Isn't there more stuff that you and Paige could do? Oh, yeah, we could we could fly all over. I've, I've missed more company conventions because it just didn't fit our schedule for our family than you can shake a stick at. But at the end of the day, I know that this sacrifice is going to be leaving a legacy for other people. That's the cool part about this. You know, and besides, we live at the beach. It's not like we got to go to a lot of places. You know, number six, what dreams or achievements can I think about and focus upon to get myself excited? Guys, if we stay focused on what the outcome's going to be, that's the important part. You know, as a family, we're doing We Fit right now. And it's so cool when you actually see that achievement each week towards your goal, towards your dream, where you're going. Now that I'm doing a 21-day fast, I might get there quicker. But it's exciting. You have to have those little benchmarks along the way. You got to have that that accountability factor. That's why we do this show in the morning. That's why we decided to go from just radio to do a live stream because we know there's some people out there that in the flicker of a minute on a cell phone, on a little netbook, or listening to this on their their computer, just 10 minutes or less, it can change their life. Number seven. What kind of legacy am I leaving with the way that I'm living my life each day? I'll guarantee it's tough being out here in front like this. And, and I don't say that of ego. I mean, I'm just putting everything out. Being transparent and authentic, people will take pot shots. People will shoot arrows at you. And, and I've seen that in the last 10 days. And it's like, man, you know, this is, this is a little bit uh, rough. I'm glad that I've studied about the rhinoceros who has three-inch skin because I think in a couple of places the skin graft's starting to get thick like that. It's tough, but I know that in the end, the more people that we help, the more that this will, this will benefit others. So it makes it worthwhile. Number seven, or number eight, what is the highest picture that I can generate in my mind's eye of the kind of person God is fashioning me to be in his glory? See, now that is the ultimate. See, every morning when I get up, it's not just the people that we serve, but I, I serve my Lord and Savior. I know everybody doesn't understand or even agree with me on that. And I, look, I'm fine with that. doesn't mean that we don't have other things in common. But for me personally, it's about knowing that I'm, I'm fulfilled inside and going out and helping other people help them achieve wherever they're at in life. It's not about telling them what my th beliefs are all the time or any of that. It's just about walking my walk and doing what I think is best. And when I fall and I, and I, and I stumble and I sin in public that I'm held accountable by those that do believe and by those that don't. That's what it's about. Number nine, am I making the most of my gifts and my time? I personally don't think I am. That's why we're trying to focus in and do more. That's why we changed at the first of the year and stopped recruiting and, and stopped building in a company. We decided to go out here and try to build in the whole industry because I do think that it'll make a difference. And number 10, 10 years from the day, what would I wish I had been doing? Let, let me say it again. Ten years from today, what would I wish I had been doing? You know what? Serving more people. That's what it is. I hope ten years from today that our radio shows, our TV shows, actually will be syndicated. They'll be live. They'll be helping people across the world. That's what our goal is because we know if we help enough people, we can change the world. It, history's proven that. That's the key. Folks, live life like it's an epic adventure. Okay? Focus on where you're at today. Remember to never give up on that dream, on that purpose, on that passion. Because if you will help enough people, and if you'll go find somebody like Chris Brady or Orrin Woodward to be your mentor, I guarantee you, you will see your outcome start to get a little bit closer. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow.